And then um, now we're talking about the island. Now it goes like this: island is same as class for like people. The island is doesn't get the fine for being violated or for for um, for um, for being seduced. Might ask a question for a minute. There's a contradiction. Acharesh is the shape of island. Yeslam knas a deaf mute, an imbecile, or the islandist, which is this woman that's not developed. She does have a knas. What are you telling me she doesn't have a knas? The Yeslam Yesla and Tanis Basula is also the claim that the husband can make if he didn't find that she was a basula. And so she is basically considered a basula. The husband can make a claim that she's not. And there's a, and it's knas, there's a fine if someone violates it. When it says, Baham my Rumya, what's your question? Harab Meir, Harabanan. We mentioned yesterday that there's a machlekes if the if the katana, the girl under 12 gets a knas. Is it only at the age 12 to 12 and a half? Or is anything under 12 and a half? The Rab Meir said only between 12 and 12 and a half. Rabbanan said from 12 and a half and down until three. Yeah. So when we said that an islandist has a knas, that's referring to the opinion that says a katana has a knas. That's the Rabbanan view. We said that a, see, the issue with islandists is that she goes from being a minor to an adult without going through the uh, puberty stage, without going through the naira. The, um, according to Rab Meir, the only one that gets the class is someone that goes through that stage, only during that stage, and she doesn't have that stage. Okay. Easy, easy, very, very easy answer. It's such an easy answer that the Gemara now has a question. Who the Karila, my Karila? And what was the questioner thinking originally? It means from just say the Mirma Kriti Lavei. So the questioner was really asking, the questioner was really asking something else. He said that he has a contradiction. What's the contradiction? A deaf mute and an imbecile and a big The garret is a girl that's over 12 and a half. And the mukha said someone that was hit by a piece of wood. She was injured, which is not considered a sula. They don't have a kind of sula. If the husband, after the first night of the wedding, says, I didn't find that she was a sula, they can't make that claim to have her lose her. Um, Lose the ksuba because he should have known better. He was a mukasait, or um, uh, she's older, she's a begera, she's, uh, she's mature, or fresh as well. It goes on. There's a summa of island, a seishlam tinus pasula. Someone that's blind and an islandist, there is tinus pasula. There is the claim. Some kosam shumerme, a summa in the tinus pasula. The summa doesn't have tinus pasula. So what we're seeing now. Is that a charesis bar seita, the begeris mukasait? Is the question from first of our seita? Is the question from, yeah, first of our seita? Uh, the Brysa that they quoted said, a charesis bar seita violin is the first Brysa that they quoted. There's the Islam Knas, the Islam Tanis Pasul. There is the claim that she wasn't a virgin. Comes along the second brisa. It says, Ainlam Tanisul. There is no claim. And there's a contradiction if there if the husband can make that claim on a woman, on his wife, um, for one day, that um uh, that the Faresh is in the shape that she wasn't a virgin. Contradiction. So my answer is, I'm a Jesus like Tasha, her Rabbi Gamliel, her of a Harab Yeshua. Gives me a very interesting carrot. This is a very general machlaikis. Go back to Dr. Bayes, the Gimel, the Dalai, the Prada, and the Five Blot of them. So it's the same machlaikis from Gamil and Rabbi Yeshua. If we trust a woman when she claims, Mishara Stani Nanaski, she says, it says like this um, the fact that I'm not a basula now, not because I mis uh, I misinformed you before the betrothal. That's not what happened. 
happened was after the betrothal of the grape. That's what the, the girl's claiming. She's claiming that she was raped after the betrothal. Now, if that's the case, so the guy's saying, well, so I shouldn't have to pay you. He's saying, uh, you know, the, the ksuba money, which is, which is extra if she's a virgin. But she, her claim is that it has nothing to do with, with me. It's really your, all your fault. It's your bad luck. It's because it's because I married you that my mazel chain is on the stuff and over there. And it's because of, it really you're involved in this bad mishap that happened that I got raped. It's because, you know, this is a, so I should not lose out because of that. We share a stunning enough. And it wasn't before, and I misinformed you. It wasn't before that. Okay. Rabbi Shul says, let me pee on We don't trust her at all. And uh, we're not living by her mouth. Uh, you know, of course, she's going to give excuses, and you know, that's okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, well, if it would be um, the reason why I behave so lousy is because I married you and my nature changed, so that would be a difficult claim. But she's saying, really, I, it was all, uh, you know, <laughs> okay. Uh, aim with the sound, so here. Yeah. Let's go back. Rabbi, if, if there was a woman that claimed that I was raped after the betrothal, mm. then she would still have the ksuba according to Rabbi Gamliel and not according to Rabbi Shua. Well, if that's the case, then we can explain these two Mishnahs. Like one of them is Rabbi Gamliel, one of them is Rabbi Shua. The only problem is, is that we're dealing with a Haresha. She's a deaf mute. She can't make any claim. And we have a shaita that also isn't making any claim. You know, uh, in, in, incoherent, you know. So the Gemara asks, Rabbi Gamliel says that we trust her if she claims it. If she doesn't actually make that claim, do we say that we believe her about a claim that she never made? What does it mean even to believe her? It's just like, we're making the claim for her. Did Ram Gamliel ever say that? The Gemara says in, yes, he does say that. Oh, uh, uh, turn on your phone. Even though Ram Gamliel may have not going to do Since Ram Gamliel says that we believe her, that's the case. We hear it looks good. If that's the case, then we open the mouth of the mute. That's a, 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 an expression that means that usually in court, we wait for the person to actually make the claim. We don't, let's say uh, someone comes in with a document that says, um, you owe me money. We don't tell the person that, how do we know that that document is true? You know, you can claim right away that that uh, he can support you. We don't tell him that. If the guy claims it, then we'll have to deal with it. And we don't tell him all the excuses. But let's say it was, uh, uh, they had the claim on the father. And now these are the orphans that are coming in. They don't know the, what's going on with the father. Then we'll actually make a possible claim that the father could have made to protect the orphans from uh, the, what they don't know. So the same thing over here. When this is a shaita. We can make claims for the shaita or the chereshes even though they're not actually making that claim. Okay. So, Hanun and Liyaski. Here it says, Hanun and We make the claim without them saying. It doesn't protect them yet. Right. Put the Pasuk in this way that says we open the mouth of the ear. It means we, 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 we put in a claim for them. She's older than 12 and a half, then the husband can't claim that she wasn't a virgin. Mar says, one second. Rav says, Now, the thing is like this when they have relations, if there's blood, then you have to assume that she's a neither. You know, separate. Only problem is, is that there's going to be blood because she's a basula. So Rav says, that a begeris, even though she's older, older than 12 and a half, nice and la reason, even if there's blood that's coming out of her, we say that they're still allowed to be together for the, that first night. 
even though they're bleeding the whole night. Even though she's, we don't say that that's dumb. Now, one second. She's older than 12 and a half. That means there's dumb. There is blood. So why did we just say that a girl that's older than 12 and a half, the husband can't claim, I didn't see any blood. There is blood. If, if he can't make a claim that I didn't see any blood, if he can't, if he, he can't make that claim because there's, there's an assumption that there is no blood when the girl's older, then why do we allow them to be together when there's blood? We should assume that it's done neither then. Not done before. It must be that we assume that there is blood. So why can't we make that claim? My answer is if he claims that there was no blood, that's what his claim is, there was no blood. So you're right, he has a good claim. What happened to the blood? What we're talking about, he was claiming that it, that it felt to him like she was already open. That he can't claim when she's older. As the, uh, the, um, it's the, tight, the tightness of it. That he can't claim if she's older than 12 and a half. There's two claims that he can make why she's not a virgin. Either there was no blood, or it felt like she, she was open already. So if that's the case, that he can't make the second claim, the Pesach Pesuach claim that she was open, that he can't make after she's 12 and a half. To say that he didn't really uh, feel she was open. Whatever, it feels like she was open. The blood claim still exists. Just age. No. She's she's saying she's not even a mukhafu. She's saying she's just a beggar. Just maturity. She's older and uh, more open. Money. Some of the same mission with Mayor. Some of the same name with Mayor. In Latinus Pesula. We're talking Suma. In Latinus Pesula. We're talking about a blind person does not have, uh, the husband can't claim that. What happened? She's not a she's not a virgin, and then she should lose the uh, the ksiba. He can't make that claim. My time under some says why does some to say that? I'm gonna observe nation of betas al gabi karka because she gets banged on the ground and she falls down. If she falls down, then maybe the betulim, the virginity gets lost when she during her fall. But she's blind. She's gonna end up banging into things and tripping. And the mother says. Well, everyone falls. So, what's the, why is that an excuse over here? So, it says, Yeah, everyone falls, but they, when they fall, if they bleed, they're going to quickly run to the mother. They're going to show the mother how they're bleeding, what's going on. The mother's going to say, Okay, that's the basulum. And then, when they get married, she should have said, You know, uh, when I was younger, I had the story. What's with this summa? The blind person says, they asked her if she's a basula. said, yeah. She didn't know that she was a mukhasate. She never saw the blood to know that to know that there was ever an issue. So the husband needed needed to assume that there was probably an issue without her ever knowing about it. Okay. The woman that was uh, sent away and divorce because of a shamra, make the shamra. Um, because the claim that she was with someone before the marriage, she not before the marriage, before in between the betrothal and the marriage. So she doesn't, and then if she ends up getting married to not married, if she get, ends up getting uh, violated by someone else, that person doesn't have to make, doesn't have to pay the um. The knot. Have to figure out what's going on. It sounds like she's not, yeah, the violin. Sounds like she's already not a psula. I mean, the husband's already claiming that she was there. Okay. The Gemara says like this. The Gemara says like this. There is no, she, she's deserving of the death penalty if she committed adultery. That's really the story. The Gemara says, I'm Rav Sheshe Safi It's not this, that story. But it, we use the same term, but it's not the same story. Here, what we're dealing with is Mishiatsa Allah Rabbi Aldusa in the She was a wild girl. 
she had a bad name before she was married. She was, she was known as a this wild girl. People said that uh, she misbehaved. But then uh, she gets violated. And the guy uh, doesn't have to pay because there was already uh, assumed that whatever she was misbehaving. She wasn't a virgin. Yeah. No, the, uh, that's it. That's what we're saying now. That's, that's our second shot, reputation. Uh, she seduced a girl that was known as a, as a wild girl, and she had a bad name. And so he doesn't have to pay the fine. I'm a papa. Well, I just, I, I said wild girl. Over I mean, here it says, Yatsala Shema, she had a bad name. She had a bad name. Bad reputation. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 If there's a document that there's a bad name about it that people said, oh yeah, that's a forgery. Sometimes in documents like that, people don't, don't believe that that. Um, so you can't collect it. It's already like no good. Why? This girl, there's a bad name about her, bad reputation, and she doesn't get the fine. So therefore the same thing should apply to the document, the bad document. Can't, can't collect the book. My says, hey, Fidami, what's going on? Elim the Nafik Kalala, the third disciple who, are you telling me that there was a, that there was a rumor that it was a, a forgery? The Kavasei Haka, the Nafik Kalala, the Tanai. Then that would mean over here that there's a rumor that she was a, uh, a, a, a prostitute. The Vama Rava, but Rava says, Yetzel Hashem Mazana Be'er in Feshima. We have a statement from Rava. It says if people talk about a woman that she's a, a she's Mizana, that she um, harlot. a harlot, so you don't have to suspect for that. What does that mean? You don't suspect for that? Yeah. She's still allowed to marry a Cohen. Just because people are talking, that doesn't mean that uh, she becomes invalid. So what's going on over here with your puppet saying that the same thing should apply to the document and we're not going to trust it and then we, we have to compare that back to this woman who say that she's already no good. It's not true. Rather, it must be Who did who? Tavasani be sura. Two people come and say that this girl had requested from us that we sin with her. They have to say that they were, they were together at that time. Probably not. But um, these two witnesses say that she was um, requesting that they sin. And the cover say haka. That same thing would be by the shtar, not, not by the document. We need to have it uh, a comparable case to say that both of them are no good. Uh, what would be here? Two people, two people show up and say that the fellow that's holding the document had approached them and Amalu Zaifuli, and he had told them, uh, forge this document for me. Which basically means sign. The sign, even though this event never took place. When it's the forge. Yeah, he says, uh, sign here that he owes money, even though it's not true. So now, if that's the case, we have two witnesses. That's why we're not going to trust the document. And that's why, now, we, even though we don't know that this document is a forgery, we just don't trust him because of what he attempted to do. The same thing over here, we don't trust this woman 
about what she attempted because of what she attempted to do. Why we'll assume that even though this uh, th these two fellas claim that they didn't do anything, but if you approach them to tell you approach them and not him, and he probably uh, you know gave into it. And so the same thing by the document, even though these guys claim that they didn't forge it, but probably someone else did. Mercy, one second. This lame hasam by the case with the girl hasam shliti perutsin. It's common for their people to be promiscuous. If you approach these two guys and they didn't give in to, she probably approached someone else that did. But ella hasa im im hu hasa kol yisel mi hasiku. But to say that this guy likes to forge documents and to collect money on these fake uh, checks or whatever fake uh, thing. So you want to tell me that all the, that, that that's a common theme amongst the uh, Jewish people that the, he didn't get these guys to forge it, so he got someone else to forge it. Is that what you're saying? Maybe it was a total failure. Maybe he wasn't able to get documents for it. Well, Konami, even the Kumahadas, you famous, you desire to You're right. We don't trust that other people did the forgery. What we'll think is, is that he tried to get two witnesses to forge it. They didn't agree. So he forged it himself, not that he got someone else. Okay, now I'm trying to just draw that conclusion between the bones. Or... No, that is. I think that's right. here also, even the Mahadra Yusuf, since he was following after getting a forge, so then Amar will say, the Yufi Zayat Kasav, that he forged it and wrote it. Now, Rashi has in the words, he, he himself. He did himself, yeah, so I got that from Rashi. Okay. Same topic. That happens like very long tomorrow. Right. The thing is, the people around the guy itself is really right. The women case, he's the guy. He's the customer. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay, new knas. Now we have a list of the girls that don't have the knas. Uh, what does it mean don't have the knas? If someone violates one of these girls, they, 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 uh, they don't get this money, the 50 coins that goes to a young girl, but he's been 12 years old and a half, possibly younger. Uh, they don't get those 50 coins. If they're uh, raped or seduced, those he's not fine. He's not fine, and they um. I, mean, I think he gets slashes probably if he was born, right? Are they um, from minors? They're they're not a hundred percent minors. They're in between twelve and twelve and a half. Now, according to one opinion, it could be that they're minors. According to the but they they they're not going to get the class because there's an assumption that they're not virgin um, beforehand. Uh, why is this? Well, Habala Gir, if someone lives with a, a woman that's converted, we don't know what they did in, the, in that culture, you know, wherever she's converting from. We don't know what behaviors they have. It could be uh, wild. Yeah. Um, if Allah Shruya, captives, Bala Shifka, and um, if she was a maid, she's a maid servant, a slave. That were converted or or um, re, uh, redeemed or uh, released from slavery over three years old. Because then, if they were, because they were in those cultures or in that uh, in those uh, societies, after three years old, then we assume that they. Um, we can assume that there was some misbehavior uh, going on over there, and that she's not a very phenomenal either. They're not a person. Right. That was the Shvuya, right. Exactly. Rabbi Daim, Rabbi says, Shvuya, Shinif, the Serebit, the Shasaf, the Shagdaira. Captive is still considered pure, even if she's older. Yeah, but you did trust the captive. The captive woman. She, somehow she's going to figure out a way that nothing happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They do it right. Yeah. 
why did we make a big deal about this before when we discussed the chapter? I'm not sure. Yeah. Yes. Can we follow it up here? He was actually, he's arguing. So, yeah. yeah. The dissenting view. Abal Bita, he's someone who lives with his daughter. We were quoting this Gemara several times before. Abbas Bita, or his granddaughter, Abbas Benai, his granddaughter, from his son's daughter. Abbas Ishta, his wife's daughter, Abbas Bina, his wife's granddaughter, Abbas Bita, his wife's granddaughter, Ainla Knaf's other son, his wife's son's uh, daughter, his wife's daughter's daughter. There's no Knaf's. Why? Because the relations that he had gave, gives him the death penalty. And to Misasim Bide Bezdin, so capital punishment from the court. And anyone that has a death penalty from the court doesn't have to pay money. If there was no accident to the woman, then he gets fined. He gets he has to pay the money of the uh, not fine, pay the money of the uh, fetus. Remember, two two men fighting, and, and one of them hits a woman, pregnant woman. If she doesn't die, then he has to pay the money. I mean, if she does die, I mean, he gets the capital punishment if he killed her. And then. He doesn't have to pay the money. Okay? You see that if there's capital punishment, there's no monetary money. There's no monetary uh, thing. Amr Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan says, Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Daisa are the same. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Daisa say the same thing. It's interesting. We don't always have um, Rabbi Yechanan. Usually not Rabbi Yechanan, but next stage is like this. It's usually Abaya or Abaya. Usually, it's a, it's very often it's a body. It says this this sage and this sage are saying the same thing, and then the Gemara uh, analyzes are they really saying the same thing? Here we have it from Rabbeinu. Rabbi the Rabbi Daisam the Rabbi. What did Rabbi Yehuda say? Rabbi Yehuda had Amr. Rabbi Yehuda said it was in our Mishnah. He says that a captive girl is still considered pure. Okay. Rabbi Daisa, what does Rabbi Daisa say? The Tanya, yeah, there's a Brisa. The Shvuya, captive girl, she's still allowed to eat Shuma. We don't say that she was, she's was she been violated. Give Rabbi Daisa. Amar Rabbi Daisa, Rabbi Daisa explains. What did that uh, Arab do? That's one that captured her, right? Captured her, right? Because he uh, squeezed her between her breasts, so she becomes violated from the kuna. As the place is saying is that they don't handle them uh, delicately. You know, they 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 do mistreat them and all of that, but it doesn't mean that they actually have relations. That she, that's uh, so that yeah, that doesn't count for to make her puzzle from eating kuna. Okay, Omar Raba. Rabbi says he challenges Rabbi Yechonon. He challenges Rabbi Yechonon's statement. I'm on the side that maybe it's Rabbi. Um, what does he say? Malahi, how do you know that they actually agree with each other? When you actually compare them, would they each say the same thing in each other's case? It's not necessarily because you're, the, the, the cases are very different. Atkan, like come Rabbi why did Rabbi say over here about the captive girl that we believe her that um, that she wasn't violated? What are we really discussing? What we're saying is that we're imposing a fine on a rapist when the girl was beforehand taken captive. Why are we imposing that fine? Maybe she wasn't a virgin because she was taken captive. So, well, we want to find the rapist anyway. So, as I say, oh, yeah, let's just make an assumption that you've been violated and then we'll free, uh, go easy on the rapist. No, we're not doing that. We don't want a sinner to, uh, to have some sort of benefit here because of a uh, halakhic assumption that we're going to do. So, maybe Rabbi Huda says you impose the fine anyway. Aval Hassam, but over the year when it came to the captive uh, regarding Truma, Karabanan like maybe she's not allowed to eat Truma. What was the rule according to the Rabbanan? Rabbanan say like this. Rabbanan say that sometimes she's allowed to, sometimes she's not. 
if we have witnesses that say that she was taken captive and she says, yes, but I'm pure, they're abundant, we don't believe her that she's pure. If we don't have witnesses that she was captive and she's the one that comes to us and tells us I was taken captive, but I'm pure, then we do believe her. So let's follow the, the, the let's say Rabbi would follow the Rabbanan in that case. Why in his case did he say that there's still, we still impose the fine? Because we're dealing with a guy that was, uh, that we'd like to give the fine anyway. Okay. Inami, or let's go the other way. I'd come like a Rabbi Daisa. So why does Rabbi Daisa say over there that she's still allowed to eat Tuma and Rabbi Tuma their Rabbanan? Dealing with rabbinic Tuma. Tuma bismanazeh, this whatever Rashi has Tuma bismanazeh, or it's Tuma midirabanan for whatever the case is. Uh, it wasn't biblical Tuma, that's why the letter is. Abel Knas de Reis, but Kna, that's a fine, that's a, that's a Torah law. In other words, you're going to exempt it from a fine. You're going to exempt him from paying the fine. Kirabanan uh, really, we'll say that he goes like the, the Tanakama, that say that there is no fine. Not exempted. We're going to cause him to pay the fine. Maybe he goes like the Rabbanon. Let's say we don't cause him to pay the fine. Because you're extracting money from someone. Taking someone's money would be a biblical law. We used to have that strength. Just take money out of someone. We came to Truma. We said it was Truma de Rabbanon. We say, yeah, let her, let her still eat Truma. When it comes to taking money from the, the rapist, we say, one second. You can't just take money. We don't know for sure what, what happened over there. Maybe she was violated. And if she was violated, when she was captured, now that it was that she was raped, I can't take the money from her. Okay. Maybe that's what the dice would hold. Because even though he holds that she's still a virgin when it comes to Truma, that was from the Dara Okay, that's Rabba's um, claim against against the Jason. I'm only a buyer. Abaya says to Rabba, maybe it's Rabba who we said before. I read in Aaron, Aaron, Rabbi Aaron Homi, the book published in Rabbi Aaron. He claims that Abaya and Rabba never had any conversation. Uh, no, not Abaya and Rabba. He says that Rabba and Rabba never had any conversation. Abaya and Rabba argue all the time. Oh. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. And he says that only that he claims that Rabba learned and Rabba learned by Rabba when he was younger, and after that, they didn't really uh, communicate. Now, we do have my purchase in between us, but we don't have an Amale. An Amale, he said, to him, he said to him, we, don't, we don't find it. okay. Um. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it seems to be pretty careful that we don't we don't have amalers in different generations. When we do, we say like, how did that happen? There is an amala that, that, that he would have said to you, but not an amala. So amala abaya abaya says to Rabba, the time of the Rabbi the Hatha is laya shaykh niskaru. You're explaining for Rabbi Yehuda that the reason why he's imposing the fine uh, on the fellow that, on the rapist that raped the, uh, the, the girl that was taken captive uh, prior to that, um, because we don't want him to, to get away easy. We want him, he's a sinner, we want him to be fine. But Tanya, the problem is we have a brisa. Rabbi Yudai Meshuiyish in this verse, Rabbi Yudai Safilo Esus Ranim Tzubasim Masayim, Tzubasim Maisle Yechay Tiniskarita. If there's Rabbi Yehuda says that if there's a woman that's taken captive, we say that she's pure. When she gets married, she gets a ksuba of two hundred. Now, is there a chayte over there? Is there a sinner that you want? You don't want to lose out. You don't want them to lose out, to 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 get away easy, and that's why you're imposing that exuba is 200. She's getting married. It's not, there's no sinner there. Mm -hmm. What are you telling me? It's about the Okay. Now, the Gemara says, I guess Rabbi responds, Nami Dilma Nimnigle Nastiga. 
just like the excuse that we gave for Rabbi Yehuda, why he wants to impose the fine on this fellow was because the way of making this guy that the sinner should not get away easy. So too, when it comes to the wedding, when she's getting married, we say that we don't want people to think that she was that she's actually been violated. So we put on her a suba of two hundred so that everyone should know that she's um, in that way she'll be able to get married. We think that she'll be uh, she'll have less chances of getting married if we say, oh, the suba is one hundred. We have a that she was violated. So the, we put on her the suba of two hundred to help her get married. This as far as this right now. That's one of the factors. Yeah. So whatever the case is, Rabbi Yehuda is using secondary reasons to impose the fine, right, to, to say that she's still a, a basula, and it's not because he believes that she really is a basula, it's secondary reasons. One, because we don't want him to get away, uh, to, to, to make this to get away easy. Second one is we don't want people to avoid marrying her because maybe she's been violent. So, but it's not because you really hope like that. And if that's the case, then maybe when it comes to Truma, um, he's going to say that um, any Truma, she cannot, not Okay. Now the Gemara says, the Sabra Abhuda Bikshasakaima. So, what are you telling me? Rabbi Yehuda holds that she's still pure like she was beforehand. Uh, but I have a problem with that as well. Well, Tanya says in a bride, someone that redeems a captive girl, he says, Anna is allowed to marry her. Mayidba, if he testifies that she's pure, lay us Anna, then he can't marry her. We'll see in a minute. It doesn't seem correct. We'll see in a minute. Rabbi Yehuda Aimer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Ben Kaka, Ben Kaka, lay us Anna, he should not marry her either. Now, what are we seeing from Rabbi Yehuda? Think from Rabbi Yehuda that he believes that she's not pure. That's enough that he's probably a Kohen, right? That's probably the the Kohen he wouldn't be allowed to marry a girl that has been violated by a by a non Jew. And Rabbi Yehuda says that he's not allowed to marry. That clearly, Rabbi Yehuda holds that a woman taken captive, we assume that she was violated. What are you telling me, Rabbi Yehuda holds that she's pure? Okay. You have to look at this price and recognize that there's a contradiction in the price itself. First, you started off saying that someone redeems a captive girl, he's allowed to marry her. And then it says, that if he testifies about her, that she's pure. Somehow he was there. He knows that she uh, wasn't, hasn't been violated. He's not allowed to marry her. It says, because he knows and he testifies that she's pure, he's not allowed to marry her. Why does that mess everything up? Holy cow, but that's not a problem. What it really means is someone that redeems her and testifies about her that she's pure is allowed to marry her, even though he's a Kayan. If he all he does is testify about her, you see the word Kadi over there, uh, means for free. And it's like for, for nothing. Then he's not allowed to marry her. Why is he not allowed to marry her? Because he didn't put his money on it. If he redeemed her, then we know that he's actually knows what he's he's, he's investing in her. He knows that she that she's good. If he's just testifying that he was there and and uh, she's pure, but he's not putting his money on. We don't know that uh, that he really knows and that she can't marry him. Right. But we think that maybe he's just testifying about her because he likes her. But he's not really 100% sure that she's actually pure. And he didn't put money on it. So there's a little bit of a suspicion of it. He's testifying and then he's marrying her. That's a problem. Okay. Right.
No, it wasn't saying we're going to write stuff like this. We're here to say that the reason why, the reason why that the Hebrew says that the Uh, you're saying in the Ksuba doctrine, right? No, it, because we're able to, he's able to accept on himself, the husband can accept on himself that. He, we're telling the husband to accept on himself the value of the, of the Basura. No, because the, hus the document just says that the husband agrees to pay you the value of the of a, of a Basura. Not that you yeah. yeah, that's the way out of the single issue. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if we knew that she wasn't, then it would be like an agreement from the paper, then there's something fairly wrong. But if it's not, it's, you know, if it's uh, questionable. Okay. So, you resolve the issue of why we trust them here, which uh, we allow them to get married here, we, we don't allow them to get married there. You resolve that, the contradiction that we thought was in the vice, but Rabbi Huda, what does Rabbi Huda hold? Does Rabbi Huda hold that she was violated or not? Omar Papa, Amar Rabbi Huda, Amar Benkaf, Benkaf Yisena. Really what Rabbi Huda holds is not La Yisena, Yisena, you take out the word La and then it fits. Either way, he's allowed to marry her. That's the easy parrot's right? Basically, you delete the word no, and then it says yes. Rabbi Huda Brader, Rabbi Shua, I'm a loyalam, Kidakani. Really, Rabbi Huda Brader, Rabbi Shua, and Rabbi Papa are contemporaries. They're both students of Rabbi and Rabbi. He says, no, you have to leave it as the original, loy, that she's not allowed to marry according to Rabbi Huda. Now it's going to be a problem, right? Rabbi Huda is the Brahim, the Rabbanan Kamar. Rabbi Huda is explaining to the rabbi something. It says, Lidi, the Benkafi, Benkafi Sena. I actually hold that you're always allowed to get married, that she's always allowed to get married. You can marry her, even though he's a cohen. El Lidit's cool. But according to you, Benkafi, Benkafi, lo you send me by like, he wasn't saying his opinion. He was saying what he believed their opinion could be if they're going to accept that logic that she would possibly violate. You don't trust her when he, uh, you don't trust him that he can marry her. When he testifies, then why, when he gives money, do you trust him? When he when he redeems it, do you trust him? You're thinking the whole time that he's uh, that he just likes it. Yeah, it's hard to know. You know, so it's because he's giving money. He's not giving money. Money has a different value. To people, you know. People give money. Think that she's going to marry them. No, we didn't. She's going to marry them. So, so redeemer and everything. It doesn't mean that he has all of the uh, investigations done properly. Okay. Rabbanan. So, what do the Rabbanan say? I played this as three years ago, made by Yisena. They said the initiative is the Rabbanan hold that no. He never would have said, uh, thrown away money for nothing. It must be that he knows clearly. Mayed Bakidi. But if he just testifies about her, the talk is cheap. Uh, but he can't marry her because mainly, maybe all he did was doing here was he likes her. So he's saying what he wants, uh, what, he, what he thinks would be beneficial to her, that, uh, so that he'll be able to marry her. Okay. Rami Le Rapapa with Shmuel, Rapapa asks Shmuel, Rapapa, son of Shmuel, asks the Rav Yasef, asks the basic question on top of Lama Zayin. The son of Rabbi Yehuda, but it's also time we ask the same question again. Rabbi Yehuda holds that a captive girl is, uh, is still pure. But Tanya, we have a bright side. Here is the Skyra, Ras Adam. If a woman converts, and right after the conversion, she sees blood. Well, remember we had a rule when we did learn Nida, is that there's a possibility that the blood comes out earlier, but it was hanging around inside her body. It had exited from the, the uterus earlier, it was inside her body for a, for a little bit of time, and then it comes out later. But when does she become Tame already inside? 
So we have to be concerned that maybe 24 hours, the ace lay, the blood was already out, and she was dealing with food in the kitchen and touching things, and all of that is tummy. But if she did an examination, then it won't go back 24 hours, it'll only go back for the examination. If she had done an examination. So let's say a woman converts, she touched food, whatever, then she sees blood. Rabbi Dharma Dayashaita. He just says, it's only coming from that time on. Uh, it would be Chilin, it would be people that keep their food. They're definitely for Tuma and other people that keep their food uh, in Todd. You know, the people that you know, care for them, and the food is always Todd. And the reason why is because you know, it's mixing up the Tuma. Uh, yeah. Tumra for Chilin, um, and it's a law for Tuma. So Rabbi Yisai says no. She she does the tuma does go back. It's called tumas mafreya. It goes back. It goes back. That means from the checking to the last checking. Now Rabbi Yehuda's logic is like this. He says that that um, it can't go back twenty four hours because she only became Jewish five hours ago. So it can't go back more than that. His view is if you can't go back from Islam, it doesn't go back at all. And the basis says no, it goes back however much it can. Okay. Now the Sikh Lam to Gimel Hadash. After she converts, she has to wait three months before she gets married. Why? Because we're concerned that maybe right before the mikvah she had relations with a non-Jew. Now she's converting. She was already, she had already conceived um, from that relation. So you want to make sure that you know who the child, who the, that, uh, the, that the child that's going to be born um, nine months after the conversion. It's not a seven month child from the, uh, from the, uh, the Jewish husband and the nine month or a nine month child from the, uh, you know, seven month pregnancy. Is it that concern? So you have to wait three months. Um, or three months in the day. Give Rabbi Huda. That's Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Rabbi Yesi Mata Liyasi Nasimiyat. Rabbi Yesi says that no, he gets married right away. Now, what just happened here? We're talking about a giyayra, and we're saying that there's a concern that she was violated, or that uh, you know, uh, a moment before the conversion, and before we said that the captives are Rabbi Huda was not concerned about them. When it says, I'm a lay, the Yosef says, you're just a shvuya karamis. You're mixing up the, uh, you're mixing up two things over here. You're mixing up a giyaris with the shvuya, a convert with a captive. Giyaris, let me enter an a convert. She wasn't Jewish. She does whatever she does. She doesn't protect, doesn't uh, guard herself not to become, not to have relations. Shvuya, I'm enter an option, but the captive woman, she was a Jewish girl before. She's going to be more careful. Coming from a different culture. Gemara says, well, we can ask Shvuya Shvuya. We can ask another question. Rami Shvuya Shvuya. The Tanya was talking to Bryce. Geris va Shvuya va Shifka. Shinifta vishin iskavish and stafi yasir sal benais. Gimel shanav yei mechat. Get something gimel shanav. Div Rabbi Yehuda. A captive as well. Has to wait three months. Before they can get married. According to Rabbi Yehuda. See, Rabbi Yehuda holds that the captive is was violated. Rabbi Yesi Matali Yosef Nasim Yadra. Rabbi Yesi says he can get married right away. Yishti. Rabbi Yesi is a liar. Rabbi Yesi is not Rabbi Yesi. Rabbi Yesi is a Mishnah. Rabbi Yesi is a Mishnah. Rabbi Yesi is a Mishnah. Rabbi Yesi, again, it's not a term. It's not a term. Um, um, He's saying, where do you see that, Your Honor? We are still enough to both. We are still enough to know. What does Rabbi Huda hold about the Yari? I'm not sure. It doesn't say clearly. Right? Okay. Amalei Rabbi Yasef asks, Midi Shmiel Akbaha, do you know anything about this? He asked a good question. 
Amalei, the Rakhapa Bashmol's son. So, yeah, Rav Papa, I got it correct. Rav Papa Barshmol says back to Rabbi Yassi, how Rav Sheshit? I'll tell you what Rav Sheshit said. Rav Sheshit said, Shiru is Shinivala. So here we're talking about, we are, we know that she was violated. That's why the captive, that's why they have to wait three months. The regular case, Rabbi Yudol, that you don't have to. Very important detail. We hear it either. My time with the Rabbi Yasis, and why does Rabbi Yasis say that she can get married? Rabbi says, Rabbi Yasis' opinion is that if a woman is Mizana, she's going to use uh, some sort of um, uh, contraceptive. So that's it for much. She's going to put that in so she doesn't become pregnant. You're right. A Giyaris is not going to want to get pregnant. Because she's about to convert. Shvuya Nami, the captive, Layadeha Mamtila. We don't know when she the uh, she's maybe she'll be redeemed very soon. She wants to protect herself. Shivchanami, the shaman here in Nikimara. She heard from her master that she's gonna be redeemed soon. She's gonna be protect herself. But let's say there's a slave that goes out because they were hit by the master and broke a tooth, broke a tooth or knocked out an eye, knocked out the eye. So over there, how are you going to say that they protected themselves the day before? They didn't know that was coming, right? You know, it was going to hit them. Uh, I have to say, Rabbi Yasi doesn't say his rule in that case. What about a Anusa Mafuta? A woman gets raped. She didn't know what was coming. Rabbi Yasi allows her to get married. She didn't know what was coming. She wasn't Mishamish from my didn't use the contraceptive before him. Alama Rav Rabba Sav Rabbi Yesi Ishim is anim satapas kleshlay tsaba. It's not that there was a contraceptive. She rolls it over, she turns over to make sure that she doesn't conceive, that everything should still out for me. She didn't conceive. That's what she does. The Ida, what does Rabbi Yuda say? Fashim Shamalain Lain Lainapha Yapa Yapa. Rabbi Yuda's concerned. That uh, maybe she wasn't able to do that and uh, protect herself from becoming pregnant. You know, with people. Let's leave it over here. Have a good Shabbos, everyone. Thank you very much. Have a good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good Shabbos. Have a good Shabbos.